losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need. Hi everyone. I just wanted to read something that I wrote March 24th, 2.09 in the morning. One of the many, you know, thoughts going through my mind and I have trouble falling asleep about past trauma. And I don't really know what to say, but I'm just going to read it and I'm going to try my best not to really pause and elaborate on anything. I just want to sort of read what's there and see if there's any opinions on it or, um, and you know, at least just be a little bit of a voice for other women and girls. Thank God I'm tall, fat, and ugly. This is a statement that sounds ridiculous, but it's something that I've thought a lot about in my life, especially in the past decade. The truth of the matter is, if I had been born petite, beautiful by society standards and had all of the same experiences that I've survived, I know for a fact I wouldn't be alive today. The situations I've encountered in my life put me in great danger of being beaten, raped, and murdered. I often think I'm lucky that my size must have been intimidating to some and has kept me safe, just barely. From the time I was a young child and sat waiting outside the VLTs of Canada Inns while my dad gambled, sitting on a bench all alone in the lobby, a child alone in a hotel of all places. From the time I was babysitting for a next door neighbor and was almost raped by their family member who was staying in the home. No police were called, 11 years old. To hanging out on the streets at all hours with friends at such a young age, to even hitchhiking once or twice, picked up by men, age 11 to 13. To hanging out with older boys, teenagers, and men at a young age, men who constantly sexualized and groomed my attractive young friend, age 9 to 13. To being exposed to pornography, to by two young neighbors. I felt uncomfortable around them after that. I told my parents and no one listened to my concerns until it was too late, nine years old. To the mailman who lived at the, on my street who would watch me walk from the direction I was coming from past their house and would turn to face my back once I passed and watch me walk all the way home. There was one time I was leaving my friend's house. This happened during broad daylight. He was walking fast behind me from a distance, at least a block away. I kept turning my head to look and he was gaining on me every second, no matter how fast I was walking. Eventually I came to Felix and Valor and made the foolish, foolish decision to turn and run down the back lane instead of continuing straight where the chances of at least being seen are much higher. When I looked back, he was behind me, only six homes between us, running. Thankfully, I made it to the door. The key was in the hiding spot for once. Out of breath and panicked, I told my parents what happened, and there was little to no reaction, like they didn't believe me. They never did. They didn't go looking. They didn't call the police. Nothing. Always nothing. A few days after that happened, my friend witnessed his disgusting behavior while we waited for the bus. He was walking back and forth, making kissing sounds and smacking the side of his leg. With staring at us. Thank God I at least, thank God I had at least one person on earth to witness this. So I wasn't made to feel like it was all in my head the way it always was. 12 to 13 years old. <sighs> to many friends coming and going throughout the years, some men would stare at me. Oh. 
to many family friends coming and going throughout the years. Some men would stare down at me in a way that made me feel scared, like prey to a predator. To my first boyfriend wanting to go straight to kissing me before knowing a single thing about me. To getting drunk and stoned often with friends and put in situations where there would be a serious lack of judgment or awareness. 14 to 17. To many jobs that put me at risk since I had to make my own way to and from, often late at night. Sometimes before transit was even operating. I couldn't afford taking a cab often. To being a key holder at jobs where I had to open or close the buildings entirely alone. 16 to 18. To catching a ride with a complete stranger, but because he was military, I was naive at the time, thinking he could automatically be trusted. To many, many awful experiences riding public transit, like the man who sat right next to me on an empty bus, complimenting my shoes, and then asking to see my feet. 17. To being followed home by one of the customers I had served weeks before. I was about to get off at my stop and he was as well, so I stayed on instead. He was smiling at me almost the entire bus ride and looked under the influence of something. <sighs> to being followed once another, once by another man who seemed to be intoxicated. He was like a shadow, shadowy figure in the dark, hidden by trees from the streetlights. He was speed walking towards me, cutting through a large yard. So I turned back around to head to the busy street just to be safe, but he did as well. So I was so afraid I waved down a car and begged them to drive me home the street, which they agreed to. He reminded me that getting into cars with strangers isn't safe either. <sighs> to a man asking me if I wanted to purchase the knife he was holding directly at me while making my way to a bus stop. To another man coming to the, the same intersection as me late at night. I felt a sense of danger, so I started running and he shouted, You better run, bitch. What if our paths had crossed a few moments sooner? To men literally coming to a stop in their cars while I was walking on the street trying to coax me to get inside. To the countless guys who tried reaching out to me on online dating, some of, the, some of them messaging long detailed message of messages about all the things they'd like to do to me while I never had a single conversation with them. To many men being outwardly upset, I had rejected them so many times that they would message me horrible things to try and insult me and bring down my self-confidence and even create fake accounts once they were blocked. To the ones who would flip a switch and get verbally abusive when I kindly turned them down. Imagine what they would have been like in person. To the ones who thought a day or two of talking to one another granted them permission to my body that it was owed to them. To abusing alcohol in my 20s to cope in social situations from being autistic with CPTSD, which put me in serious danger many times. To someone removing the peephole off my downtown high-rise apartment suite while I was home, half-dressed on the couch. To entering many abusive relationships and attracting abusive partners. To being noticeably followed by other vehicles while driving numerous times. To being sexually harassed by an employee who managed the place I live. He joked that he would be jealous if I brought a guy home with me. And then he was going to set up hidden cameras. <sighs> to him asking for my phone number and texting and calling me repeatedly when I had asked to only contact me for emergencies. To now rather being alone than take any chances. Both can be harmful relationships and being a single female, especially when others know you're alone. All of this stress brought on a heightened sense of awareness of my surroundings and I could easily see others' intentions when they were self-serving or harmful to the other person. No one ever took my advice, they always found out for themselves. All of this stress and being autistic also made me unaware endless amounts of times of others taking advantage of me. 
imagine all of this happening to just one girl, one woman, one plus sized, ugly, average, tall, big bone girl who also happens to be disabled. If all of this had occurred to me, but my exterior was small, skinny, seemingly younger, weaker, I just know all these horrible memories would be amplified and multiplied countless amounts of times. My size and my instincts kept me safe. They say always trust your instincts. My instincts has, have always been questioned and belittled. I mean, the instincts of what I was doing at a young age do need to be questioned, but I was young, <laughs> like, and no one was, you know, setting a good example for me. So now you, now do you understand why I've lived in fear, why I've been paranoid, why I've questioned everything, why I've picked myself and everything else apart, why I've never lived a normal day of my life with my CPTSD, why I've said bizarre, irrational statements or asked absurd questions about events or special occasions, why I can't enjoy myself alone or even with others. I'm always questioning their motives or dissecting their words, looking for flaws, lies, ammunition, why I've judged people, especially men at first glance or first red flag. And even then, through all the things I had survived, the thing I had suppressed, the thing that haunted me most, where all my insecurities stem from, the visions, flashbacks, and truth came to light. I was also being sexually abused at home. And this is just my story and then I, I know a lot of us girls can relate and we just need to spread awareness on this stuff because it just needs to stop somehow some way like some of these things seem impossible that I'm trying to fight in my videos but we have to at least try and keep sharing our stories thank you for listening